Are you playing satisfactory and suffering from FPS drops? In this video, I will go over most of the satisfactory graphics settings and explain what each graphics setting does. Finally, I will show you the optimal settings that can increase your frame rate by up to 45%. So without further ado, let's get to point. The first graphic setting is VFX quality. This setting controls smoke and reflection. If you check the different smoke modes, you won't see much difference because they are similar to each other and it's hard to tell the differences during gameplay. In terms of performance, there's a 5% difference between the highest and lowest modes. But the situation is different in the reflections section. In the low mode, the reflections are disabled. By going to normal mode, the reflections are enabled and in high and ultra, only the quality of the reflections increases. These reflections are enabled if you have not enabled the global illumination graphic settings. Because by enabling global illumination, the more advanced type of these reflections is enabled and these reflections are disabled. I will explain more about global illumination later. The reflections in this graphic setting are simple SSR type that fades away when the camera angle changes. But undoubtedly the presence of reflections is much better than the absence of them because we see water in different parts of the map. In terms of performance, there's only a two frames per second gap between low and ultra. Here I recommend high. The next thing is about clouds. Cloud quality determines the quality of the clouds. In off mode, there are no clouds. By going to low, clouds are created and in subsequent modes, only their quality increases and no other specific change is seen. The largest performance difference is related to going from off to low. With clouds turned on, we see an 8% performance decrease, which is undoubtedly worth enabling. I recommend medium settings and enabling clouds. It is really difficult to distinguish between medium and high, especially when you are playing. Of course, I must add that testing this graphic setting was very difficult because the game world is completely dynamic and has a day and night cycle and a weather cycle. The next setting is contact shadows. To see the effect of contact shadows, just go to a place full of grass and turn the setting off and then on. Contact shadows are one of those settings that puts very little pressure on the graphics card, but has a very big impact on the game's effects, because without them the levels are simple and poor quality. So here I recommend that you definitely turn this one on to make the game more natural. In terms of performance, there's only a difference of 1 or 2 FPS between on and off. Here the recommended setting is on. The next graphic setting is called Far Shadow Trace Distance. This setting determines from what distance far shadows are processed. At first I thought this setting was broken and did not work, but later, after a little exploration of one of the game maps, I was able to see the effect of this. Visually, this one has a relatively large impact on the game's effects, especially in open spaces with a wide field of view. But in terms of performance, I saw almost no performance reduction. Here, the best setting is far, which covers almost all distance as well. There is no difference between far and cinematic, but since the game developer has warned about the severity of the cinematic setting in the graphics menu, I do not use this one. The next setting is related to API. Here you have three choices, which are DX11, DX12, and Vulkan. Out of these, Vulkan has the worst performance and is full of stuttering. There is not much stuttering in DX11, but you cannot use XESS. In comparison between DX11 and DX12, DX11 is only 2% faster. According to the developer, DX11 is deprecated and DX12 is the best choice. So here I recommend DX12. By choosing this mode, you will not only see flawless performance but also get access to all the upscaling technologies. The next setting is post-processing. This setting controls several other settings such as motion blur or fog. The most important one here is fog. Visually, there is almost no difference between the lowest and highest settings. So even low is acceptable. In terms of performance, going from low to medium and also from medium to high, we see a 3 to 4% performance drop each time. Between high and ultra, I do not see any performance difference. I should add that fog testing is also very difficult in a game where everything is always changing and there is always a possibility of error 
in the tests. Here I recommend the medium setting. The next setting is foliage quality. This one has always been one of those settings that has a big impact both visually and in terms of performance. The strange thing here is that even in the highest mode, we do not see much of FPS drop. By comparing the modes, it is easy to see that you need at least a high setting to achieve acceptable quality. Medium mode and especially low mode completely destroy the image quality and are not recommended at all. In terms of performance, going from low to ultra causes a 6% performance drop, which is not much. Here I recommend at least a high mode. The next setting is the most important and at the same time the heaviest graphics setting in the game, which affects many elements of the game. The global illumination option not only changes the lighting of the game, but also affects the type of reflections. If you remember, at the beginning of the video I talked about the VFX quality setting, and that this option includes simple SSR reflections. If you enable global illumination, the advanced lumen reflections will replace the older SSR reflections. These reflections no longer have the problem of disappearing due to changing the camera angle and in terms of performance. They also do not put much processing load on the graphics card. The frame drop in the global illumination setting is related to the lighting itself. By enabling lumen, we see a relatively high frame drop of 12%, which increases to 28% when going to high mode. Here I recommend at least a medium setting to have at least the advanced reflections. I also need to remind you, to enable GI, you need a powerful CPU. So if you see FPS drop after enabling GI, it might be because of low-end CPU. The next setting is for shadows, which is always one of the heaviest settings after global illumination. Here we have four modes. In low, all shadows are disabled and the game world looks lifeless and dead. In medium mode, shadows are enabled, but their resolution is very low and they flicker. In high mode, we still see flickering shadows, which is not very noticeable in gameplay. The only perfect shadow mode is Ultra Mode, which, incidentally, puts a heavy processing load on the graphics card. Here you can see that by going from high to ultra, the speed drops by 15%, which is not small. Here, my recommendation is at least high setting, which has an acceptable level of quality. But if your graphics have extra power, be sure to choose Ultra Mode. It is worth it. The next setting is View Distance, which determines how far objects appear in front of the player. In near mode, there is a problem with objects appearing suddenly, which greatly harms the gaming experience and immersion. In this mode, not only distant objects, but also objects close to the player are removed, and the game world looks empty. In media mode, there is an acceptable level of detail. The best mode is far, which simultaneously provides good performance and quality. Keep in mind that this setting requires a powerful processor more than a powerful graphics card. So if you have a modern processor, you will not have a problem with this setting. And the last graphics setting is anti-aliasing, which smooths and cleans jagged edges of objects. Off is not recommended at all, because the edges of all objects are jagged and ugly. FXA is not much different from off, and is not recommended. If you want speed and quality at the same time, TAA is the best choice, which smooths edges to a large extent, and its only problem is that it blurs the image to some extent. If your graphics card is extra power, TSR is undoubtedly the best option. But keep in mind that this option adds a lot of processing load to graphics compared to the previous one, and is only recommended for high-end graphics. Going from TAA to TSR causes a 12% performance drop. The recommended setting is TAA. And these are recommended settings. And now let's compare the ultra settings with the optimal settings. Going from ultra to optimal increases the speed by 45%, which is a great figure for mid-range graphics. This speed increase is while the game's graphics remain almost untouched and you can hardly tell the difference between Ultra and these settings. I hope this video was useful for you. If you liked this video, hit the like button and if you want to receive the next videos as soon as they are released, subscribe to the channel 
and activate the notification bell. If you have any comment about this video, leave them in the comment section. Until the next video, bye.